This video is sponsored by Serverless 360. More about them at the end. Hey, IT guy, I got a bone to pick with you. What's up, manager guy? You made me look bad in that bashed in meeting with security guy. Uh oh. And now I'm worried we might get hacked because he said it's not secure. Did he give any reasons? Oh yeah, public IP addresses, too many high permissions, standard ports, and there's no disaster recovery plan. He really said no DR plan? Well, no, that one was me. Really, manager guy? Look, I know you keep saying it's the cloud, but eventually something's gonna go wrong and we need a plan before everyone can sign off. Okay, manager guy, let me do some research. Oh, and one more thing. Yeah? Security guy's vacation starts tomorrow, so we need answers today. Really? Don't you think that's a little unrealistic? No, it's not, we decided. And if you can't figure it out today, then no bastion. Well, okay then. Thanks for meeting again, security guy. Sure thing, IT guy. Good luck convincing me. Hey, I'll do my best. Let's start by talking about that public IP address thing. The general guidance that I would give here, never attach a public IP address to a VM directly. You should be using another network resource like Front Door, App Gateway, Low Balancer, Azure Firewall, or Bastion in front of that VM. The public internet traffic will go to those resources and then whatever traffic you've allowed can go to the VMs behind them. Finally, an IT guy who gets it. I've been saying this since we started using Azure. We need to limit our exposure and lock things down more. You've got my attention, IT guy. What's next? Oh, cool. So disaster recovery is also gonna be pretty easy with Bastion, but there is a lot of depends. Now, in short, we need to just set it up as part of our DR networks, but the way we set it up is gonna depend on our network topologies. And the two most common topologies are mesh or hub and spoke. Hmm, okay, keep going. Now, as you know, a mesh network peers all of the networks together, so you'll be able to use one Bastion instance to rule them all. Yeah, and what about that uh, hug and poke? I think you mean hub and spoke. I don't know, maybe, I guess. Yeah, in that case, uh, Bastion should just go in the hub with the other central resources. And since the hub and spokes are peered together, you need one Bastion per hub. Sounds good to me. But doesn't DR match production, which means we end up with a hub and spoke in prod and another in DR? Yeah, you're right, security guy. And how do you suggest we deal with that? Well, it depends on how segmented you want DR to be. If the DR networks are peered with the prod networks, then we can use one Bastion between them. But if they're disconnected from each other, then each would need their own bastion. Yeah, I think we can check that one off for now and circle back once we know how DR will be connected. What else you got? You were also concerned about permissions? That's right. We have way too many people with owner rights and it has to stop. Yeah, I totally agree, security guy. In Azure, there's three basic kinds of permissions, owners, contributors, and readers. And almost nobody should be an owner because they can change everybody else's permissions. And I've actually been working on a proposal for using privilege identity management along with access packages. Hey guys, can we stay on topic and save that for another video? Sure, we can talk more about it next time. Okay, so how do we control who can access Bastion? Now to use Bastion, a person's going to need three different Azure roles, but you can scope them at whatever levels we want. And that's virtual machine reader, network card reader, and Azure Bastion reader. Sounds easy enough. And if Bastion's gonna be working across a network peer, then you'll need the reader role for virtual networks. I do like reader roles. I know, right? Everyone should read more. Yeah, so if uh, we're good on permissions, we can talk about ports. Yeah, see, I've got a problem with default ports. Okay, and what's that? Everybody knows them, which means those ports are the first ones the bad guys go after. Yeah, that makes sense. So Bastion does allow you to specify non-standard ports. What, like an ephemeral port? Yep, you could use something like uh, 33890 or any other high ports you wanted. You can also use network security groups or the Azure Firewall in combination with Bastion, so you only allow the traffic that you want and then you lock down all the rest. Okay, but how do we control who can access Bastion? That's what permissions do. I th I think what manager guy means is that do we have a way to have users request access to Bastion when they want to use it? Uh, yeah, I, I, it's exactly what I meant. How do we do that? Are you talking about JIT? Yes, sir, I am. You can combine just-in-time VM access with Bastion just like any other virtual machine. How does that work exactly? This is a feature of Windows Defender that blocks management ports on VMs and requires a user to request access to open the ports. Oh. Yeah, I know you were saying words, but I'm not following. Yeah, so there's this graphic in the Azure Architecture Center that might help explain it a little more. 
and that's linked in the video description below. Now the setup here can be a little tricky since you're having two different tools that control access at the same time, and the key is doing things in the right order. First, you'll need to set up Bastion as normal, and then you need to configure the network security groups for Bastion. I like the sound of that. What NSG rules do we need? Now on the Bastion subnet, we're going to need four inbound and four outbound rules. And these are all specified here in the dock, and the link again is in the video description. On the inbound side, we need to allow port 443 from the internet, the gateway manager, and the Azure load balancer to any destination. This way, Bastion can send the traffic to any Azure VM it wants to. Then we'll need a rule for the Bastion host communication on port 8080 and 5701, and that'll be to and from the virtual networks. On the outbound side, we have four rules as well. The management port communications for 22 and 3389 to the virtual network, on port 443 to the Azure cloud, Bastion communications again on 8080 and 5701 between VNets, and port 80 to the internet for all the session information. And that's the Bastion subnet NSG. Then on the VM subnet NSG, you wanna allow the Bastion subnet IP range for port 22 and 3389. I like it. Now let's get back to JIT. Right, now JIT requires the VM to be onboarded, which you can do from the VM configuration blade, or you can do it from Defender for Cloud, and then click here on Workload Protections, and under the Advanced Protections, go to Just-In-Time VM Access. Click on the Not Configured link right here, and select the VMs that you want to onboard, and then click Enable JIT. In a few seconds, Defender will add a new rule to the VM's NSG that will block the management ports, which means no one can remote in at all. Um, I think you're missing the point here, IT guy. Really? <laughs> yeah, yeah. The point was to protect the VMs, not take them offline completely. Yeah, that's not what's going on here. It's okay, I got this one. JIT locks the VM so users have to request access. Oh, how do they do that? In Defender for Cloud, the user checks the box in the VM they want to access. Yeah. Then they click Request Access. You just toggle on the ports that you need to open. Then you can use the IP address that you're connected to the portal with, or they can specify a range for multiple users to access the VM. Then you specify a time range and enter a justification at the bottom. Then you click open ports. Well, that seems pretty easy. What happens next? Defender will add a new rule to the NSG that allows the source IP and ports you specified to communicate with the VM so you can remote in. Hey, that's super easy. Yeah, and I think you can even have approvals in the workflow if you want to set that up. Right, but that's another video. Hey, I was going to say that. So what do you think, security guy? You happy? I'm never a happy IT guy, but you did your homework and addressed all my concerns. You get a thumbs up from me. Let's do it. Well, meeting adjourned, I guess. Anything else? Oh, I almost forgot. I got a few security questions from our last Bastion video. Dave Storm asked, what about browser security where the browser has been compromised and there's been a keylogger or a screen scraping? Great question, Dave. I have talked to the Bastion product group about this and they said that screen scraping will only be able to see the HTML frame and not the remote session, so no worries there. As for the keylogger, there are no specific protections that Bastion would give you, but if you already have a keylogger on your system, you've got bigger problems because you've already been compromised in some way. They could have your credentials or worse. So have your security folks do forensics on that computer change your passwords or even better, start going passwordless like I showed in this video over here. And then we had a question from Sir Oliver. Great name, by the way, and I do want to know if you were knighted before or after your journey to the center of the earth. Read a book, people. Now, Sir Oliver wants to know if the Bastion session can be recorded. So no, not at this time, but the product group is working on it. And when that's ready, we'll definitely have a video about it. Now, thanks for those questions. And if you have any feedback or questions or even an idea for a new video, comment down below and maybe we'll get that answered in our next video. Speaking of what's next, I'll tell you right after this message from our sponsor. The cloud can be a complex place, but Serverless 360 is trusted by many of the world's leading organizations to remove application blind spots and resolve your problems rapidly. 
you can instantly visualize, monitor, and fix any issues in your cloud apps, and then achieve end-to-end -end tracking of your business process flows. And Serverless 360 will save you time by auto-generating your documentation, turning your Azure subscription data into actionable insights for usage, security, and cost. Try Serverless 360 free for 15 days, or you can book a demo using the links in the resource section under the video. So now that you know how to secure Azure Bastion, you might want to know how you can deploy it, which you can see right over there, or you can click over here to learn how you can build scalable apps like Bastion for yourself. Happy learning.